greetings again. My name is Jesse. This is my YouTube. Uh, I'm going to fix my hat here so I don't look too weird. But first, let me kill that feedback because I do look weird. Okay, so what I do is, <coughs> well, that's what I do. I cough a lot. I uh, come here lately to talk of talk about Jesus Christ and salvation towards Jesus Christ to show the Bible because I believe I, that it's missing. We have so many forms, so many different uh, forms. New English translation, uh, New International Version, and it waters it down, it takes away from God. I think God knows what he was doing when he created the the original 1611 authorized King James Bible, I think he knew what he was doing. And we as people, as human beings, can only hurt what God was doing. <coughs> so, I start with the prayer, and I'm, I, I was watching some World War II documentaries. So the prayer today, and it's important that a different prayer, you know, I've heard ministers talking about prayer, and how it needs to be specific, not just general. So, dear Lord Jesus Christ, there are many men and women serving in the American military, and they have their own problems, they have their own depression, their own anxiety. They're away from their families, some have been injured, some have been severely injured, both physically and mentally. I ask that you heal their pain, Lord, their mental health, help them with their mental health issues, help them with their bodily issues, Lord, help them with their families and friends. Uh, even though they may think that everything they've gone through in life convinces them that life's not worth it. Touch their hearts and their minds, Lord, so they will fall in love with life again and, and start pursuing all the good that you give us every day. And of course, Lord, open their minds and hearts so they will come to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Come to pray to accept you as their Lord and Savior and be able to have that blessing that you have for all of us, which is eternity in heaven. In your name, dear Lord Jesus Christ, I ask for these things. <coughs> now, I've been <coughs> reading, and let me just check on something. Yes, okay. So, I've been reading from the book of Romans. <coughs> and let me reiterate that. that from this day forward, it really is <coughs> instruction for the new believer, and for the believer, really not the new believer, the believer. It's third Romans chapter seven, verse one. Now ye know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For women, has a husband and his mother the husband be dead she loose she is loose from the law of her husband so then if while her husband liveth she be married to another man she shall be called an adulteress but if her husband be dead she is free from that law that she is no adulteress though she be married another man and that <coughs> you know, I say that this is so easily understood, self-explanatory, and, and it's just saying that on the superficial, it's talking about a woman who loses a husband and can remarry and not be considered an adulteress. If I'm married, <clears throat> and, and let's qualify the divisions of marriage, if I a person who believes in Jesus Christ is married to a woman who believes in Jesus Christ and we divorce for for any other reason other than uh, adult, um, fornication I cheat on my wife or she cheats on me then we are both adulterers we are adulterers we, for, for getting divorced wait we're adulterers when we get divorced and go to someone else so if we are married 
being a believer to a believer and we get divorced divorce for any other reason than uh, fornication <coughs> cheating then when we remarry we are committing adultery <coughs> excuse me so wherefore my brethren ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ that ye should be married to another even to him who is raised from the dead that he should bring forth fruit unto God for when we were in the flesh the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death but no we are delivered from the law but now we are delivered from the law that being dead where where when we were held we should serve in you as a spirit and not in the oldness of the letter now I, I had said in the superficial that's what it's talking about but in the bigger picture it's talking about our sin and how we were in a marriage contract with him and we died of sin and we're resurrected in Jesus Christ and now the Holy Spirit is in us and we are new people and we should start behaving accepting the guidance instructions of the Holy Spirit excuse me to gag so uh, I mean the coffee Romans 7 7 what shall we say then is the law sin God forbid nay I have not known sin but by the law for I had not known lust except the law had said thou shall not covet but sin taking occasion by the commandment brought in me all manner of confusion I think for without the law sin was dead for I was alive without the law once but when the commandment came sin revived and I died and the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death for sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good was then that which is good made flesh death unto me God forbid but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful for we know that the law is spiritual but I am carnal, so under sin. For that which I do allow not, for that I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. And then, I do that which I would not. I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now then, it is no more that I do it, but sin dwelleth in me. For now, that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For good that I would do, I would do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more that, no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in a law that, when I would do good, evil is present in me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, 
and bringing me in, bringing me into captivity, captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? <clears throat> I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that in the mind I myself serve the law of God, both to flesh the law of sin. We all have this personality dichotomy, even after we have prayed to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. In fact, it's even harder to try to be um, righteous and pure and follow the Word of God after we have accepted Christ. Because first of all, we're craving those things that we are familiar with and we want because we used to like them. And second of all, the enemy is working hard at knocking us down. Not because he thinks that he can take our salvation away from us, but because he knows if we keep being examples of Christ, other people will become attracted to Christ and will pray to accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. So, therefore, if we are a person who has come to accept Christ in our life, and we are sincere, we accept the responsibility of being different than everybody else in the world. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore no now no condemn condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sin for flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is empty against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither in, indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit. Of the body you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the Spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit <clears throat> that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present are not worthy to be compared with the what shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation 
of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For ye know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan with ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our bodies. <coughs> For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things together work together for the good to them that love God. Then he also justified, and whom he justified, then he also glorified. Okay, we have technical difficulties here. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for, all, for us all. How shall we not with how shall we not with him give us all things? He shall lay anything to be the charge of God's elect. It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, J rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also marketh intercession for us. Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are all killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loveth. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things that represent nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus Christ our Lord. Now that's the end of the reading. <coughs> okay, let me try to break it all down because it needs to be said. Um, we are human beings. We're here. Whether we want to debate creation or evolution doesn't matter. The reality is that we're here. And by being here, we're able to see what goes on around us. We're able to see what goes on inside of ourselves and we're able to see what goes on around us, the people around us. By being familiar with ourselves, we know that we are sinners. We're bad people. We're people who don't stop at the red light, don't stop at the stop sign. People who look at our neighbor with animosity, with hate, with, with uh, guile. We judge. We criticize their hairdo, their body type, their vehicle, their home. There's dark energy in us. I would say that there's evil in us. And sometimes when this person is looking at that person, there's some kind of mental competition going on. 
and it's leading to nothing more than hatred and animosity and tension and difference and conflict and we know this because we live this every day every day every person judges a handful of people Negative, negatively ridiculed. So we, then, we know this detail about ourselves and we know this detail about other people. <coughs> now, we also know that there are people who rise to positions of leadership within groups like mayors, governors, presidents, chief of police, um, directors of nonprofits. We know this. And many of these people are, are not led by what's good. We, we see this. We, we can see it and we can say these individuals are not led by righteousness. We can say that Paul Ryan is not led by righteousness. Now, if you want to take it to the extreme and say that Mr. Donald J. Trump is not led by righteousness, well, look at his works. Look at what he is doing. You know, his works speak loudly for, I think, for his moral character. Perfect? No. Who among us is perfect? Well, but the point that I'm making is that we have a lot of examples of sin, but sin that harms other people. Therefore, there is a need. There's a great need for something, for someone to intervene in all this human evil and to put a stop to it, to remedy it. Why God? Because we're evil. He created us, that's my scanner, I monitor frequencies around but he created us with the capacity to be good the potential to be good to hope for good and he did not he, he didn't create Adam evil he didn't create Eve evil he wanted the best he put him in paradise so if you want to debate creation or evolution, the re what, what is not in debate is the high propensity for evil in members of the human race. Not only just as in individuals, as neighbors, but also as citizens of countries, as, as leaders of nations, and <clears throat> we see it every day. One of the last conclusions I came to meditations is that the Bible is, is a, a a code of conduct manual. And it's a very good code of conduct manual and it's necessary. It's ne it was necessary in the time of Adam and Eve and Moses and Abraham, and Joseph, Daniel, you know, throughout history has been it's been necessary. It is unfortunate that humanity has done this and they have done that. Let me bring you into a, a sort of a conversation I was having with an individual. And people like this exist. First, let me preface it by saying that something strange occurred in the taxi industry in El Paso, Texas. All of a sudden, taxi drivers can set their own prices as long as they, uh, they're honest with their customers, which is the way it should have always been. I was always troubled by the extent of interference. Well, so we have changes now. So I can set my taxi meter, uh, publish my taxi fare card, and I am in compliance with the law. So let me start with that. But, and it's important, at the end of the story, this will be important. So I'm having a conversation with a person about salvation and it's in I'm going to say it's a person who's a Catholic and raised a good Catholic and a good Catholic doesn't go to church they through osmosis through hearing things they acquire information about the church so not that they're actually involved they're engaged in the church family members are 
are involved in the church and they say this and that and they pick up this and that and sometimes radio and television so they're they're, they're <coughs> point of reference is being far removed from the actual Catholic Church and, and it is important so I start telling them about Christ dying for the forgiveness of our sins and he's heard it everybody who professes to be a Catholic has knows the story of Christ and that Christ died for our sins. And I tell them that it's important to believe, but it's more important to accept Christ. Christ is offering an opportunity. Christ is offering an invitation to heaven. And we have to say, Jesus Christ, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In the prayer, I repent of my sins. I ask for your forgiveness. I need you, I love you, I accept as my Lord and Savior. We need to understand that because we are sinners, we really are in need of Christ. We are in need of redemption, we are in need of salvation. We are in need of somebody to tell us you're wrong in the way that you've been living. You're wrong to hate your neighbor. You're wrong to have fear. You're wrong to have a negative attitude. You're wrong to not appreciate what you have in life. You're wrong not to set goals and objectives. You're wrong to be lazy. Somebody has to tell us that we're wrong because we are wrong. And by being wrong, we're going to have to suffer the consequences of our errors. Which means that when we die, if we don't have Christ in our life, we're going to go to hell. Not because I tell you this. Not because I want to compete with your Catholic ideas because God said it and that's what the conversation was I was going through the Christ the death and resurrection forgiveness of sins and that Christ says that I will come and I will knock if you let me in I will spend time with you if not I will depart <clears throat> trying to get him to understand that it's necessary to, to accept Christ to go to heaven after we die and he starts on this irrational thing about, you know, my body's going to die, what, what's going to go to heaven? And at, at the, well, you'll receive your celestial body. And he says, no, I don't have no celestial body. And I tell him, well, the Bible, I don't, I don't believe in the Bible. <clears throat> and right then and there is, is when, it, when the conversation goes down that road, it's best just to say okay and talk about something else and I bring it up because most of us do this I did it for a very long time I could have died all those times all those years lots of people I've said this before God Jesus Christ sent many people and for my own reasons for my own arrogance for my own pride believing that I know everything I said no rejected it and if I had died in any time, I would have ended up in hell. And I also told them, hell is an eternal separation. It's not fire, it's not pitchforks, and you know, it's just an abyss. It's darkness, no light. And being there, understanding that for the rest of eternity, there is no more remedy. <clears throat> and Jesus Christ came and died to the forgiveness of our sins and if we don't accept that we we die because we are eternal and that's another thing I told we are eternal because the Bible said God said let us make them in our image God's eternal so we're eternal God's telling us that we can spend eternity in heaven but the critical point is that a customer comes up they ask me for the price. I give them the price that I said. And this little person starts having a, a, a fit. Literally implying, oh, look at how great of a Christian you're not because you're lying to the customer. And I'm not lying to the customer because I have set my prices as the law allows me to. And I have printed out my business my fair card and posted it where it's supposed to be posted so the customer can see it and my taxi meter is within sight of the customer 
So the price I gave the person is my price. It may not be his price, but the law allows him to charge something different than me. But the point being is <clears throat> that he's after I have tried to help him within competing with his Catholicism, and I will call it that, as trying to give just trying to help Jesus Christ. We help Christ. We don't do anything other than help Christ. So I was trying to help Christ reach him. And one of the biggest details with me right now is I am highly idealistic. Um, I have a video of El Paso police officers doing random searches at a bus station in El Paso, Texas. In America, that's not supposed to happen. I'm highly idealistic, but not about people. I don't want to say it, but I think it's over. I think the human race is lost. And I said before, just like the Bible says, just like the Bible says, many are called, few are chosen. Many are called and few are chosen. And that's that, ultimately that's what's gonna happen. If you run into this video, it isn't about me. It's about God and the human race and how we are sinners. Even when we know it's wrong, we still do what's wrong. And we need someone to straighten us out. If it is not for the grace of God, if it is not for the mercy of God, we won't have anything. We wouldn't have access to information that can calm our depression, calm our anxiety, calm our pain and suffering, help us with our hurt, help us with our grief, help us with our trauma that can eventually become psychosis. We start believing that, that there's nothing we can do. We have no control. We have no handle on life. And life is just going to do to us what life is going to do to us. And we're just going to have to suffer. And if it's not for a God, all our wrong ideas can lead us to something bad. So, if we are responding to the lies of the enemy and rejecting Christ, we're going to suffer the consequences of our poor errors. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the good news. Today, in this crazy world <laughs> where people are trying to do everything to destroy a president who's about lower taxes, lower spending, reducing the national debt, a, a global partnership in the war on terror, reining in irresponsible spending by the Congress, um, you know, law enforcement. Law enforcement is necessary. I have been listening to people talk about how um, white Americans are lazy. African Americans are lazy and that if all the illegals are taken out of America then America is going to fall because there will be nobody working. These people are, are are happy to support lawless behavior. That's sin. They're telling the customer this is an effort to destroy America. This is an effort by the enemy to destroy America. But the point being is we're not perfect. We're searching. And I can tell you that the answer to all your questions is Jesus Christ. To all your pain. To all your suffering. To feeling lost. Like you have no purpose. God can help you find fun in life. God can help you enjoy your life with simple healthy pleasures of life. Life can help you in your marriage. Life can help you in parenting your children. Life can help you confront 
the worst things that life has offered you. You're a young woman, you used to be married, but your, di your husband died of cancer. God can help you with all that pain. If you lost a child, God can help you with that pain. And he can cure you, and he will cure you. And you will be blessed. You will feel blessed. You'll live like a blessed person. You will have a smile on your face. What I've been noticing in Donald Trump, he's a happy person. He's a campy, happy camper. He's a happy warrior. He knows what needs to be done, and he's willing to do it. And the problem are all the negative people who want to interfere. And how, how do people rationalize that they're interfering with the proper administration of the country? It's just the same as, as justifying rejecting a God that wants to help you with everything that is challenging you in life. Therefore, <coughs> and, and it's simple. The prayer is simple. It's a recognition that we are wrong. I repent because I realize I'm wrong. Because I realize I'm a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness, God, because I know I need you. And you've been forgiven. You have. All of us have been forgiven. Christ died on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. We all are forgiven. All we have to do is accept that forgiveness. And accept the reality that we need him. So we can pray. I repent. I ask for your forgiveness. I need you in my life. I love you as my heavenly father. Jesus Christ accepts you as my Lord and Savior. Again, I repent. I ask for your forgiveness. I love you as my heavenly father. I need you in my life. Jesus Christ accepts as my Lord and Savior. And He'll do the rest. He'll take you to a church if He wants you in a church. He'll take you to a Bible study if He wants you in a Bible study. He'll tell you to listen to Christian radio, whether it's music or instructional radio, Bible studies on the radio, on television, or even looking for resources on the Internet. The greatest resource is Him, the Holy Spirit. If you're you are on an abandoned island. You're not on an abandoned island because God is there with you. God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit are there with you. And everybody's searching. And if you're searching, I hope you find Jesus Christ. And I hope you let him into your life. Thank you for listening. And I wish you well.